Hey everybody, Rob Mauer here. Welcome back to Tesla Daily. Today we are going to be talking about FSD Beta 10.69. This looks to be a huge release. We'll talk about the release notes and some of the early footage so far. We've also got a very interesting presentation from Tesla's head of Autopilot, some news on Tesla's factories, an update from Sandy Monroe, and more. All right, quick look at the markets, which are continuing to decline early this week, the Nasdaq finishing down just over 2.5%. Tesla though today actually doing relatively well in comparison, outperforming both its beta and the NASDAQ as well, finishing down 2.3% to $869.74. Reminder, we are now in the week of the stock split, so that will happen on Wednesday, but really take effect on Thursday. We've already talked about the macro calendar, so we won't spend much time on that. Looking at the PCE on Friday though, and then of course any Fed updates from the Jackson Hole Symposium this week, that runs Thursday through Saturday. All right, so let's get into FSD beta 10.69. So far, the early reports here seem to be quite strong. This seems to be a significant step forward. The release notes here are different from the release notes that we covered for 10.13, which never made it past employee testing. We won't go through every single bullet here, but just a couple worth highlighting. The first is that Tesla has added a new quote unquote deep lane guidance module to the vector lanes neural network, which fuses the features extracted from the video with course map data, such as lane counts and lane connectivities. This architecture achieves a 44% lower error rate on lane topology compared to the previous model. This enables smoother control before lanes and their connectivities become visually apparent. Over the years, there's been a lot of debate about mapping and how tightly integrated that should be with autopilot. Tesla has tried a few different approaches with this. To me, how it sounds like they are settling in now is using the map data if they can to provide helpful context to the visual data that they are getting. But using it more is nice to have guidance that takes a significant backseat and precedence to what Tesla is seeing with the visual system, which is very much how a human would use mapping information too. I think Tesla's been a little bit hesitant to work stuff like this in because it could be taken as a little bit of a crutch. But at the same time, if you're only using vision and not concerned about mapping data at all, there's just a fundamental limit on what you can interpret because you can only see so far a human or a camera. So you're limited in the context that you can have and this provides more context. So this should provide some big improvements in terms of disengagements from lane selection. The next thing here I want to point out is that Tesla talks about having upgraded their occupancy network to use video instead of images from single time step. This temporal context, so time related context, allows the network to be robust to temporary occlusions and enables prediction of occupancy flow. So this is a pretty big deal. Keep that in the back pocket because we're going to talk more about that later because Tesla's director of autopilot gave a presentation that covered this in great detail. A lot of other improvements in the release notes, and of course, one that we've got to talk about, improved unprotected left turns. This is one everyone's looking forward to. Tesla says that this improvement was done by allowing optimizable initial jerk to mimic the harsh pedal press by a human when required to go in front of high-speed objects. So it will accelerate more quickly, something that I would like to see done in a lot of other circumstances, particularly vehicle following on the highway. That's a separate topic though. Tesla also says they have improved the vehicle's lateral profile approaching such safety regions to allow for a better pose that aligns well for exiting the region. If you've been following along with Chuck Cook's observing of Tesla's ADAS testing team, we've seen that different pose in the median section. So that's what Tesla is talking about here. And then finally, they say they have improved the interaction with objects that are entering or waiting inside the median crossover region with better modeling of their future intent. So Chuck has had now a couple of days to test this out and the improvement is night and day. We can see huge, huge progress here from Tesla with Chuck's turn. I would definitely recommend checking out the entirety of Chuck's videos on these, but we'll highlight one here that was particularly impressive. You can see that as Chuck is approaching the intersection, we've got a couple of different visualization cues here. First is a creep wall of sorts, shows a little blue line for where the Tesla is comfortable creeping out to. To get the best possible view of oncoming traffic that it can, we can see then in the median there is a little blue zone indicating that that is where it would intend to head. Both of these things should help the driver feel comfortable with what the vehicle intends to do. In this particular case there's very heavy traffic but there is a stoplight just to the right that is causing vehicles to the left of Chuck to stop and wait, give him space to go through. The vehicle sees that, recognizes it, waits to make sure that the other lanes are clear, and then heads into the safe zone in the median properly positioning itself in that new pose. It then has to deal with vehicles entering the median behind it, preparing to turn left, and possibly occluding the view. But in part because of how the vehicle's pose is set up in the median, it's able to wait it out, and eventually, even though the truck is still behind it, sees that the coast is clear, and is able to proceed through the intersection successful, unprotected, left turn across three lanes of pretty high-speed traffic, with vehicles also entering the median at the same time. So this is awesome to see, definitely undeniable progress here. Chuck saying that this blew him away this morning, definitely still some improvements that need to be made. He said he tried to throw everything he had at it, and this is what it did. Every turn was not perfect, but if this is what we can do with good engineering, the future is bright for this technology.
Sounds like from Chuck's experience so far, it's getting these turns about nine out of 10 times, which again, not perfect, but that's an extreme step forward from where this was just a couple of months back. Tesla will continue to refine this. Elon on Twitter saying that, quote, this early version of 10.69 is being extra cautious, so it waits for a moderately big gap in traffic to cross. Upcoming releases will do better in heavy traffic, end quote. I think in this case, it's also fair to question, okay, is this an overfit solution? Tesla spent a lot of time and resources out there on this turn in particular, which if you have to do that every time, obviously not a scalable solution. That's kind of Tesla's whole approach to autopilot is to make sure that it is scalable. But I think just from watching the videos, it's extremely clear that there are behavioral changes here in how the vehicle is approaching things, the behavior in the median, the pose that it is taking, the information that it's visualizing and communicating to the driver. These are general improvements that will apply in other circumstances as well. And Chuck has tested this out on a few other similar turns. And while again, it is not necessarily perfect yet, definitely seems to be a significant step from where things were in the last version. So very exciting initial progress reports here. We'll see how that perception changes as people get a little bit more experience with it. Unfortunately, I haven't received this version yet, so I can't give my own feedback, but as soon as I do, we'll definitely share that as well. Elon has said that they'll probably do a wider release towards the end of the week of 10.69.1, and then in a few weeks should be good enough to provide to all FSD beta participants with 10.69.2. Always a little bit of confusion on what exactly that means. My interpretation of how Elon has been communicating this is FSD beta participants, meaning those that already do have access rather than everyone that has purchased, the latter of which still seems to be an end of year type of goal. Elon saying that that is one of his main goals for this year alongside Starship to Orbit. It's definitely a little bit unclear though, so maybe it does mean wide release, I don't know. But anyway, Elon also noting that after wide release of FSD beta 10.69.2, the price of FSD will rise to $15,000 in North America on September 5th. So we've talked about price increases like this many times in the past. You get all the same arguments every single time, like, oh, this is too expensive. Tesla's take rate would be higher if they had a lower price. Why are they doing this? My opinion on this has stayed consistent. Tesla is clearly not trying to optimize for profitability today with this option. They're trying to keep the take rate low because they think it's underpriced. They have plenty of vehicles out there now collecting data that are operating FSD beta. They actually have too many because Tesla's not even giving it to all those cars. So if they were trying to pull some data collection lever, they can do that without having to do anything with the take rate. They're already extremely profitable today, even with a lower take rate, even with the entirety of the option not being recognized yet. So they don't need the cash up front. And if you feel as Elon feels that Tesla's actually close to solving something like level four full self-driving, it would be pretty stupid to sell a license for technology like that that's going to last for 10 years, maybe 15, even 20 years for some vehicles for what, a few thousand dollars? That's way underpriced. Even $15,000 is underpriced, assuming Tesla does achieve what they're setting out to achieve, which of course they believe they will do. If and when that point comes, they'll make a lot more money from vehicles that haven't yet subscribed than they would from selling the license at a reduced rate now before that functionality is fully there. So I think it's kind of as simple as that. And if Tesla shows that they will consistently continue to raise the price, well, that should show customers that, hey, if you want this, you should probably be buying it. Eventually, I believe this will only be a subscription option. All right, remember, like I said before, to keep that information on the occupancy network in this FSD beta update in your back pocket. That was because we've got a presentation that was newly published from Tesla's director of autopilot, Ashok Elswami, about the occupancy networks and some other elements of Tesla's autopilot system. Came out this weekend. It was actually recorded back in June for the Computer Vision and Pattern Recognition Conference. Ashok also tweeted a thread talking about this and noted that a lot of the improvements that he's talking about here are being implemented in FSD Beta 10.69. This should be a pretty good little preview for some of the things that we'll hear Tesla talk about at AI Day Part 2. I will link to the full video in the description. It's relatively technical, but I think he does a good job of putting it in understandable terms. So I'll do my best to recap that. To me, it sounded like with this occupancy network, what Tesla is doing is going from image space to vector space. Ashok talks about how previous approaches would have been focused on determining drivable space from sort of each individual pixel, from individual images from each camera. He describes the occupancy network as a different approach that is stitching together all the cameras into a video feed and forming a 3D vector space of what it sees to determine what space is occupied, what space is unoccupied, to then determine the vehicle's planning path. He also talks about how it's not just a vector representation of what the vehicle can see, but also predictive in nature. So forming a vector representation of what it expects based on what it can see, even if some of those things are not necessarily visible to the camera at that point in time. So again, if we flip back to the release notes for 10.69, we see that they have upgraded the occupancy network to use video instead of images from single time step. This temporal context allows the network to be robust to temporary occlusions and enables prediction of occupancy flow. 
So putting all of this information together, it sounds like Tesla is now, if not at the point, at least extremely close to what they had talked about at last AI day, which was not only getting to a vector representation of the observable space, but also introducing that time-based component, so running it on video rather than on static images. That was one of the things that we heard might come for FSD version 11. So this kind of makes sense with the FSD 10.69 moniker. Elon feeling that that is worthy of such a title. And so far, you know, initial results seem to indicate that that is the case. What we would still be missing from FSD version 11, as it was originally talked about, would be the single stack on highway and for summon and things of that nature. So this seems to be a pretty big step. Asha covered a lot of other things in this discussion too. One of the things he highlighted was Tesla's pedal misapplication management. We've heard Andre talk about that before as well. This is where Tesla uses the autopilot suite to correct if somebody accidentally hits the accelerator instead of the brake based on what the cameras are seeing. The vehicle will correct that action itself and apply the brakes. So Ashak said that this is preventing something like 40 crashes per day, which seems like an absolutely crazy number. That'd be something like 15,000 each year. You have to remember with crashes like that though, it would be something that may not show up in crash statistics that we're normally looking at. All right, moving on from FSD, we've got a couple of updates on production here. First, Holmar sharing out a photo of Tesla signing a 1,000 vehicle banner. Apparently this was indicative of Tesla at Texas producing their 1,000th vehicle of the week, which would be a really encouraging sign. Elon on the Q2 earnings call had said that it might be, I think a few months was the term he used before Tesla would hit that milestone at Texas. It's possible Elon at the time was in his mind kind of thinking of it in terms of 4680 vehicle production. Could explain a little bit of that time discrepancy in Tesla potentially hitting this milestone so much earlier, but this would be a very encouraging sign for Q3 production and definitely for Q4 if this is accurate. So pretty exciting news there. Definitely we'll take that into account with forecasting. In less positive news, we do have an update on the Sichuan power situation in China. Apparently the industrial power restrictions have been extended until August 25th. So that's another five or six days onto the initial six day power restrictions that were in place. We know automakers have been affected by this, CATL has been affected by this, and apparently Reuters is saying that they have been only able to partially operate due to these power shortages. Reuters also says that, quote, sources familiar with the matter said CATL's Yibin plant makes battery cells for Tesla, and there were concerns that disruptions could eventually affect the U.S. automaker, though production at its Shanghai plant remains unchanged, end quote. So that matches what I had reported last week, that there wouldn't be risk to August production with these power restrictions, but potentially for September. So hopefully that will end on the 25th, but we'll continue to keep an eye on that throughout this week. Then last couple of things here, we've got an update from Sandy Monroe. He gave his kind of first thoughts on the 4680 pack teardown that they have ongoing. They're really still talking about the overall architecture that they're seeing with this pack. A lot of detail on how everything fits together and how that process is simplified and lowers cost. They continue to be really impressed with that. Monroe mentioned that with every one of the parts, you can't screw it up. He said he's really thrilled with that. And one thing that was particularly interesting, he talked about back at his days with Ford, he had recommended a new part and that part improved the product. It reduced leakiness. And when they implemented it, he said that, quote, what we heard from the dealerships was, hey, we're not making hardly any money on these rocker covers anymore. What did you do? End quote. People have talked a lot about how dealerships are incentivized to make service happen. (laughs) And, you know, how do you have service happen? Well, faulty parts. Not necessarily the most aligned set of incentives, and that, as we have talked about, can influence a company's culture and the business decisions that that company makes. So interesting to hear Sandy's experience with that. And then last thing here, Tesla owner Silicon Valley sharing out a photo of a new supercharger station that looks like it has pull-through supercharging stalls. Great for towing, and hopefully we'll see Tesla do more of this type of setup with the Cybertruck, hopefully, you know, less than a year out at this point in time. One final note for today, Elon did say on Twitter that Neuralink will be having a progress update show and tell on October 31st, specifically noting that that is Halloween. All right, that will wrap it up for today then. So as always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and we'll see you tomorrow for the Tuesday, August 23rd episode, Tesla Daily. Thank you.